Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another short little unboxing video to show with you guys. I'm pretty used to knowing like what comes in these super shiny packages, but yeah, you know, sometimes I'm surprised. We'll go ahead and open it up together like we usually do. As per usual, uh, if it's something I can link, I will link it right down in the description so that you guys can check it out if you want to. It absolutely helps this channel when you use those links, but that is entirely up to you. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. I hope it's what I think. I mean, at least I hope it's from who I think. Um, because it's usually, if it is, it's something ridiculous. And it is, I'm right. Yeah, Max Ace likes to send things in this sort of, it's not actually metal, obviously, but the shiny packaging there. Um, so, uh, what do we got? What is this? The big, <laughs> CF, CF handle big spearhead blade. Okay. Uh, oh, this is sealed. Okay, so we got to give another little slice here. Typically, where you get this stuff is the MaxAce website. Uh, a few retailers have picked up MaxAce, and I think a lot more should. Um, but uh, wherever wherever I can get this, this doesn't feel super duper crazy. This is this is a uh, at at this point, MaxAce has become synonymous with like the crazy overbuilt stuff, which I love to showcase, right? Um, because it's just so so far from the normal boring knife world that is, you know. It, it, all around us, right? The stuff that stands out is the stuff that's different. We've got enough practical stuff, right? And I, I love touching on that stuff too. It's always nice, but I get excited to look at a Max Ace because it's always wild. This does not feel massively heavy though, so perhaps this is going to be a Max Ace on the more practical side of things. Actually, yeah, this is uh, this looks pretty calm. This looks extremely calm for Max Ace. We have. Let me get this stuff out of here so that the camera's not trying to focus on it. We have uh, a totally normal blade stock thickness of probably 140 thousandths, maybe 135, something like that. Titanium pocket clip, uh, milled spacer. Look at how they integrate this. Wait a second. What is going on here? That's all one piece. <laughs> okay. So this, is this an integral? No, it's not, it can't be. Is it a sheathed frame? I think that's what's happening here. This, these little lines right here made me think that this was a separate backspacer, but then I realized, no, this whole piece on the back is one wrap around titanium backspacer. Let's open it up. Oh, pretty nice. Definitely a little bit different blade shape there. We've got a recurve. Um, a short little recurve, but it's all the same. Yeah, the grind doesn't, it feels a little bit thinner in here, right? But then there's a slight, that's interesting. It transitions from being a little thinner behind the edge in this area to being definitely a little thicker up here. Interesting blade shape, obviously not going to add much in the way of utility. It's more just to look at. Ergonomics are nice and there's a nice little thumb ramp here. Um, but what we have going on on the inside, I think we really need to take a look here. These are just, the frame is carbon fiber. This is so, okay, so the, the carbon fiber is attached to the lock via this screw right here. And then how is the, <laughs> how is the carbon fiber attached to the titanium? This might require me to actually take it apart completely before I actually do the review on it. It looks like I'm going to guess, well, these screws look like they're housing, yeah. So this is the stop pin. And then I'm just unsure as to how this is all being attached. Does that have something to do with the backspacer? This is really interesting. We don't normally see a construction like this. And when we have, we certainly have seen this sheath construction or wraparound backspacer construction before. I just don't think that this is quite the same thing as like the Weezifius. Obviously, it's not the same thing. Um, but uh, it's not as simple as just a wraparound backspacer. But the construction of it is definitely interesting. We have an entirely separate piece of titanium 
that's been laid into this shred carbon fiber, which looks pretty good. Let's take a look here. Voids are a common part of shred carbon fiber. I don't care if you're paying, you know, 200 bucks for a, a knife or you're paying $2,000 for a knife. Shred, uh, especially shred and marble carbon fiber often uh, are um, usually fairly riddled with voids. That's just the nature of the beast. Couple more down here, right? couple on this side, but it's pretty typical as far as that, that kind of thing goes. Um, access to the lock bar is very good, and this is a front flipper only knife. I think the detent is tuned decently well. Action feels all right. I'm sure that that will break in over time. Blade, as the um, box said, is going to be M390. Uh, definitely the most interesting parts about this knife are the blade, which is a little different. It's not like an entirely unique blade shape. It's not something we've never seen before, but it is cool. Definitely something that you don't normally see. And then the construction here, um, which is, I, I almost expected the backspace. Look at, hold on. Is this, do we have a little indicator here? Is this, this like wraps into, I wonder if this like ho almost like hooks onto the frame, because you can see that the carbon fiber is lipped underneath the titanium here and here. So I'm kind of wondering, oh, there you go. That uh, that stop pin is definitely holding the um, carbon fiber in place against the titanium frame here, and then perhaps under here as well. So maybe it's these two screws holding everything in place. What's pretty cool about this is that we have managed to do, if, if those are, the integrity screws, they've managed to do this. They hid the pocket clip screw. They've got one screw holding in the titanium lock face. I'm almost certain that that is gonna be titanium. No, actually, that's a steel lock face. Yeah, okay, that would make sense. There's no lock bar insert. So this piece right here is steel, but back here, this is all titanium. Interesting. Uh, now, I think some people might view that as cheaping out. Um, I guess they could have done titanium here and put a steel lock bar insert in, but, I mean, it's the surface contact is the same. I mean, it's steel on steel contact. This is just like a... You could think of it as a gigantic lock bar insert, right? I don't know, I guess. It would have been more expensive for them to do titanium and then a steel lock bar insert, right? I mean, it, it, some people like to... You know, it's like they, they want that element just for it being there. But... Uh, I, that's not really all that important to me. Um, if those are the only integrity screws, that means that they managed to do this with just two screws on each side. And we have larger, at least T8 fasteners there, which is really pretty cool. Obviously, how cool depends on the price tag, which at the moment of recording this, I haven't seen, but by the time you're seeing it, I will have definitely seen the price tag because I have to have looked at it to link it in the description. Uh, but if you want to check out the price, you certainly can. Uh, this is not a review. This is just an unboxing and first impressions. I'll do the uh, full comprehensive review uh, a few weeks down the road. Let's go ahead and weigh it. Okay, 4.02 ounces, not super duper heavy. And for blade length, I'm sorry, for overall length and blade length, let me give you that here real quick. And yeah, we're coming in. It's pretty, uh, I mean, it's a full-size knife, eight and a quarter inches. That's to the back of the knife, not the little lanyard hole thingy. Um, and the there's a ton of blade, legitimately 3.75 inches of blade. The cutting edge is all of three and a half inches. That's a pretty good blade to handle ratio there. Not bad. Interesting. Uh, I like that it's different. You know, it's not, I mean, these elements are not necessary. There's nothing here in the way of the blade shape or geom geometry that makes it advantageous over a more traditional drop point blade or something like that. And the construction of the frame doesn't necessarily add any durability or any added utility, but it is interesting, right? Which is the demographic that they're going for. People who will purchase knives like this, right? They want something interesting. Uh, you can get practical for way less than 50 bucks, right? Um, so quality, craftsmanship, all that stuff. I mean, quality of machining, execution of materials. We want that, but it's the interesting elements that separate it from what we typically see in the knife world that people are more interested in paying more money for nowadays. And I get that, right? Uh, if you're somebody who typically spends more money, this is usually something like not elements exactly like this, but more interesting than typical elements or something you're interested in. And if you do not buy knives regularly that are in this price tier, then you're obviously not somebody who's super duper interested in that stuff. 
Unless you can find it maybe in the less, I don't know. It's really hard to like, like box people into parameters, right? Because we've got people, we've got different types of people all over the, all over the place. But I, what I'm saying is that a general consistency is people who regularly spend more money on pocket knives nowadays, we want something a little bit more than just a sandwich construction frame lock, right? Which is what we usually, that's what we've seen for the last decade. So this is neat. It's interesting. Uh, give me some time to spend with it. Um, give me some time to spend time with it in my pocket and, uh, we'll have a, uh, a full review for you guys down the road. Thanks again to Max Ace. I'll link it down in the description. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.